Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College, here to continue with our GPA calculator in Chapter 3. Our GPA calculator now is going to be able to calculate a cumulative GPA across several classes. And the way we're going to be able to do that is by using arrays and controlling flow. In GPA 10, we're going to use an event listener to trigger the function. Our function is going to use the for control structure to loop through all of our classes to determine our total credits and our total points. The HTML by now is pretty familiar. We're just creating a button. We're giving it an ID, in this case, button 10, calculate my GPA number 10. And we're also creating a paragraph. And I've been IDing our paragraphs as GPAP10 and just putting a little nonsense text in them to see them change when we click our button. Our script in this case is going to look like this. It's going to be named GPA10, and it's going to have two variables that are declared as arrays. You know when an array, when you see one, because it has the square brackets. The interesting thing about an array is even though you would say this has three values, the values have positions that start with the number zero. So this is credits position zero, position one, and position two. This is the points array, position zero, position one, and position two. It's very important to get into the mindset of starting your arrays at position zero. I'm also declaring two new variables. Total credits I'm setting to zero and total points I'm setting to zero. And we'll see how those come into play later. Now here's the new construct, the for loop. The for keyword is followed by parentheses in which three pieces of information must be entered in the correct order and separated by semicolons. The first piece of information the for loop needs is where does your counter start? And my counter is going to be named i. That's a very common variable name for a counter. So I'm declaring it with var i. I'm setting it equal to zero. The second position says, well, how far does i increment? I want i to increment to when it becomes less than credits.length. And what credits.length is, is the length, the number of values in this array. So this array has three values in it. We're going to keep running this loop until i is less than 3. So it's going to run for i equals 0, i equals 1, and i equals 2. When it hits i equals 3, this is not going to be true anymore, and the loop is going to stop. This last part tells you how i increments. i++ plus plus means it increments by 1. So the first time we go through this loop, total credits, which we declared as 0 here, is set to itself plus credits i. What is credits i? The first time through the loop, it's 0. So credits i is going to be 3. So the first time through this loop, total credits is going to be set to 3. 0 plus 3. And total points is going to be set to 0 plus the first position, the 0 position of points, 12. When it goes through the loop the second time, total credits is going to be 3 plus credits. Now i will take on the value of 1, 3. And points i will take on the value of points 1, 12. So the second time through the loop, total credits is going to be 3 plus 3, and total points is going to be 12 plus 12. The third time through the loop, which is actually when i is equal to 2, so total credits is going to end up being 3 plus 3 plus 2, and total points is going to end up being 12 plus 12 plus 8, because we've looped through this for loop three times for position 0, 1, and 2 in my array. Document.getElementById gpap10 sets so inner HTML property to migrate after plus credits length, that's going to be 3, plus classes is, and then total points divided by total credits. And I've got my event listener there to listen to the click of GPA 10, and let's see if it's working. Calculate my GPA. My grade after three classes is four. Now, anytime you're declaring variables and you're changing their value in the code, it's an excellent time to consider using console log. And you can console log any variable to your console, right click and inspect, and see the value of that variable appear here while you're running your JavaScript. So I went back to my page and added those two console log statements. I added them right after the total credits assignment statement and the total points assignment statement. I added these two console log statements. I'm going to rerun my JavaScript and show you what that looks like in the inspector. I'm going to go to the console. So each time it's looping through that 
for loop and console logging the value of credits and console logging the value of points. So we can see the credits and the points accumulate in their scores as it loops through this for loop three times. The second function we're going to write, GPA11, is the exact same thing, only we're going to use the while control structure instead of the for control structure. The while control structure only has one piece of information that goes in its parentheses, and that is how many times shall we loop through the code. And in this case, we use the familiar construct of finding the length property of one of our arrays that we know we want to loop through. So we're going to run this code while i is less than 3. Notice that I still declared my counter variable, but I declared it outside the loop. And notice that I also still have to increment i. This time, with the while construct, we increment at the end. So the same three pieces of information are in the while loop. They're just constructed a little bit different than in the for loop. I'm using the same values, and I've, I've given myself an A in each class, so my GPA is still 4. In GPA 12, we're going to use the do while structure. We've got the counter that we're starting at 0. We're doing some statements. We're incrementing our counter, and we're doing these statements while the test is still true. Number 13, we're going to use if else statements. And in this case, I'm going to try and start getting into letter grades. So let's say you're taking three three credit classes. Your grades are A, B, and C. And so then you're seeing how to declare an array with textual values instead of just numeric values. And in this case, I'm going to use the for construct to run through this loop but then check to determine what grade you got and then give you the points based on that letter grade instead of figuring all that out in my head ahead of time. For, and we know that we start our variable. This time I declared the variable outside the for loop so I did not have to use var here. And how many times does the code increment? And it's going to increment by one. And now I'm using the if statement. And here's something very important. When you're doing a comparison statement and you're asking if something is equal to something, you use two equal signs, and sometimes three if you want to worry about the data type, text, number, boolean. For our purposes right now, we're just going to use two equal signs to do a comparison, because we know that one equal sign is an assignment statement. So we're testing is grades i, and remember i is zero in the beginning, so here's our first grade. Here is grades zero. So if grade zero is equal to a, then we want to set our grade points at four. If it's not A, it would go on and check else if B, else if C, else if D. And then finally, we're just going to assign grade points of I to be 0 if we're not getting an A, B, C, or D. And this first time through, though, grades index is 0 is A. So my grade points 0 is going to be set to 4. Down here, I'm setting my total credits to be the total credits, which I initiate as 0, plus credits i, which is 3. So total credits takes on the same type of assignment statement. We're just adding the number. And total points, then, I'm calculating, finally, as total points 0, plus credits i, 3, times grade points i. Grade points is going to be 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0 based on this whole if structure. And we're going to go through that if structure and increment our total credits and total points for each value in the credits array. Last but not least, we're going to do the same type of looking up of our grades, only we're going to use a switch statement instead of a bunch of if and else if statements. This is the same basic idea. We're declaring our credits and our grades using arrays. We're initiating total credits and total points is equal to zero. We're initiating our counter is equal to zero. And we're also declaring grade points as an empty array because we don't know what our grade points are going to be yet. And we're using the switch statement. We're going to go through the loop. And then the switch statement looks up grades i. The first time grades i is zero, it's going to look up a. And then it's going to come down here and try and match that whatever value that is. In this first case, it hits the first case a and sets grade points 0 to be 4. So in this case, we find the letter that we're looking for, and then we match it with these case statements. So the switch statement just matches up whatever value we're evaluating with the case down here. And then we'll set that grade point to be the proper number. Once we get the grade point value, we go down here and we use it in our calculation to figure out our total points. 